How's it going, guys? You look amazing today, and you are amazing. And welcome to Student Pad TV episode 15. <laughs> will be about beginner's guide in building a home cockpit so you can make your own home cockpit like this behind me at home it's very easy simple for beginners like me so if you like this video please give it a like and also subscribe so you don't miss out on anything on getting into aviation right now as you guys know pandemic is still going on 2021 hopefully it will be better but um, many people couldn't fly to be current flying a sim is the best way and building your own cockpit can make your flying simulation be more realistic and it also makes it easier for you to push the button that you need to push a lot of the time in this video i will teach you guys how to build your own simulator panel in a simple cheap easiest way as possible okay so just to go through what i have first i have built two panels one is the a320 overhead panel and the other one is the g1000 uh, cockpit panel and then I have bought the Grossmaster A320 series, the throttle and the yoke. And also I have another yoke is CH product. And let's get started. First, you have to decide which panel you want to build, which aircraft type, anything. So you decide that. Second, if you don't have flight simulator yet, you want to decide which one you want to buy right now. Um, I'm using x 11, anything you want. But in this video, we'll be specific on x 11 because I use x 11. So once you have your flight simulator software, you want to choose which kind of USB interface board you want to use. So there are different types of board right here. USB joystick board, uh, Arduino, the Leo Botnar board, BBI32. These boards are very important because these boards are what powers the buttons that you want to press. I will quickly go through. If you pick these two boards, um, you don't need to worry about how to program the buttons because once you plug this in, you just go into your simulator and they can detect your homemade button and then you can set the functions that you like in your simulator. If you use this Arduino board, then you have to choose a software to go with this. One is SimVim Cockpit, also specific for x 11, and if not, you can use MobiFlight, which a lot of people use um, for their home cockpit. You can search on YouTube, they will teach you how to use it. So many tutorials out there for MobiFlight. I just want to say this board is the easiest to build because they will give you pre-made wires, so you just solder it onto your buttons and then plug it in, and then plug it into your computer. You can use it straight away. Just like this button box I have built, I have two USB boards inside this box. One board, you can put in 12 buttons. Once you choose your board, you want to plan your buttons. So if you have um, only a few buttons that you want to use, you just use, you just use this. But if you have a lot, then you use this. Okay, so right now I'm going to briefly explain different types of buttons that I use which I find it most useful and most simple to wire it. So there's a few types, momentary push button, toggle switch, toggle push button, rotary encoder, three position uh, toggle switch. About these five types are the most common ones that I use and normally you can use it for anything that you want and also you can find out what types of buttons are for your own simulator panel and then you go to your local electronic store to buy those buttons or you can order them online because of the pandemic so right now on to step six you want to go to adobe illustrator to design your own panel or you can just buy a box like this and drill and you drill the holes in and then you put your buttons in so either you go on illustrator or just buy a box but you have to buy the buttons first because you want to measure the width and size of the hole that you put your buttons in so once you got your panel you can just straight put your buttons in with you don't need to drill your board more once you've got your panel design you go to your local acrylic store and they can cut it for you and they can use the laser cutting machine to cut the holes for you because there's so many holes and acrylic boards are uh, not expensive very good quality or you can just 
drill the hole yourself if you have your own workshop. You got your board, you can um, put the labels on it. I use white out to put my label and then you put every button in. So right now you put every button in your board. Step 9. You want to wire your buttons up and this is the hardest part because you need to know how to solder. And I will put out the pictures of all the tools that you need which is best for you and easiest for you to do this process. I'm going to tell you guys the basic idea of wiring the button. I'm just going to use Arduino Mega for the wiring and the wiring process will be used with SimVim cockpit because that's the software that I use to program this Arduino board otherwise you need to coding. Okay, so the basic idea of wiring buttons. See the buttons, you have two legs or three legs and this same thing with the two legs. It doesn't matter the types of buttons, but just matters how many legs they have. You need to know ground and the number pins on the Arduino. Every two leg buttons, one leg will go to the ground and another will go to the number. I'm not going to teach you how to solder. You can um, see tutorials on YouTube, but I solder the wires for each legs and it doesn't matter. So one wire goes to the ground and another one goes to pin 8. Now you have to remember, so if you want this to be pitot heat switch like this, you want to remember that pitot heat switch, you put it in pin number 8. And now you go into the software, which is, I'll use Simvim Cockpit. Once you go into the software, this uh, website, you just put pitot heat and then put it on pin number eight. So this is how easy it is. And you just repeat the steps. Now see it, the ground, there's only two pins for the ground, right? If you have a lot of buttons, you can wire the ground like daisy chain the ground together. And then you put only one input. If you have two switches, you just wire one leg to the ground wire and then both can connect to the ground onto the board. Normally three-legged, the middle one is the ground wire. So you solder your wire onto here and then you put it into the ground, ground pin. And then the top and bottom leg, you plug it into the numbers. It has to be like six, seven, five, six, four, five. You cannot be like two, seven. So the two legs, they have to be on side by side. Once you plugged it in, you go into SimVim and then you put the, you assign your butt, your, you assign the switches onto the, the numbers that you plugged in. I think this way is quicker, easier because then you don't have to remember which is which because once you wired everything up, everything will be very messy. Normally, momentary switch, toggle switch is two-legged. Three-position switch would be three-legged. So they are very easy, simple to wire. Now we move on to the encoder, rotary encoder. So it's this five-legged. So this is the encoder. You, just, you can rotate for any knobs you want to use. So this seems very hard to wire, but actually it's very easy. Same thing, just see the three pins right here. So this is the middle leg is same thing the ground and then the two you go to the num number pins and same thing the numbers have to be consecutive so you cannot jump jump the numbers and then you assign it on send them as well so this is the rotary this rotary encoder have you can also press you can also press it as well some doesn't have but some have this pressing is momentary switch, so it's the two legs up here. So one goes into the ground and one goes into the number pin. So I forgot to mention that you have to download SimVim plugin first and then put that folder in your Explain 11 plugin folder. And once you're done with assigning your buttons, you click on save and you will download a data file. And save the data file in your SimVim folder in your Explain 11 folder. So once you wired everything up, you can plug it in your computer and go test it and you can go fly. So I hope this little introduction video helps you guys get 
into building your home sim cockpit and makes your flying at home more realistic and easier. If you like this video, please give it a like and also subscribe and follow me on my Instagram which I have posted a lot of my flight training journey. Any questions about um, building home cockpit, if I didn't mention, comment below. Again, thank you so much and I hope you are staying safe. Hope this pandemic will be over very soon so everyone can get back on flying in real life. I will see you and your amazing self next time.